Hey everyone, today I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Rose Hill Memorial Park Cemetery and I'm about to show you someone who's famous, but yet you've probably never heard of him. As you come into the cemetery, you'll see this funeral home right here and there's a mausoleum right here. This is just to the west side and who we're looking at is this one right here that says McGee. Now this person, his name is Carl McGee. His original name is Carlton. And he is located right here. And he is an interesting character in that um, he was actually from out of state in Iowa where he earned uh, uh, two master's degrees and he was a teacher. He came to Oklahoma here in the Tulsa area and he became a an attorney and uh, from there he uh, also got into uh, publishing and editing papers where he moved then moved to Albuquerque New Mexico and uh, he was involved in ousting a senator there uh, what was going on was some Navy oil fields that were there were being sold at like the rights to it and stuff like that and it became known as the teapot uh, scandal teapot dome scandal and so uh, his writings about that actually uh, put that senator in uh, jail but from there uh, he had his own paper there in Albuquerque but um, he wasn't well re uh, accepted there because he also exposed the local politicians in the court system. And so one of the things was he, he actually ran into a uh, judge that he had ousted. That judge actually hit him. And uh, Carl then pulled out a pistol to try to shoot at that judge. He missed the judge and hit an innocent bystander and killed that bystander. Now, he was uh, acquitted of uh, his manslaughter charges that he had, but, you know, one of the things was he, he just wasn't well accepted in the area after that, and so he decided to come back to Oklahoma. This time, though, he did not come back to Tulsa. He actually went to Oklahoma City, and he his goal was to start a paper there called the Oklahoma News. Uh, that paper uh, is not something that's still printed today that I'm aware of. If you are aware of that, just leave a comment below. But what he is known for is he got on the Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce. Specifically, he was charged with the traffic area. And so what happened was there was a lot of merchants in the downtown business district that were complaining about increased traffic and we're talking about the 1930s and there was an increased amount of traffic because of cars uh, being sold more and more readily available Oklahoma City was a fast-growing city at that time and so people were working in the downtown area with cars parking their cars and going to work but the problem was they were parking in front of retail businesses that needed those parking spots so that they could have customers shopping at their stores or places of business. So people would park there and work somewhere downtown and be there all day long. So businesses started complaining about that they didn't have open parking spots and that they were losing revenue because customers weren't shopping there. So he was assigned with the task of figuring out a way to solve that problem. Now what they were doing is that they were having cops come around and just simply chalking the tires. And if they had been there for more than an hour, then they would uh, find them for parking. But that wasn't working because people would actually go out and wipe off the chalk on the tires. There was arguments on whether or not they had actually been there that long, stuff like that. So Carl, he came up with the idea of the parking meter. Now, in order to do so, uh, he had to enlist some help. And so at Oklahoma A&M University, he went to a professor, and that professor and he decided to have a contest to see if anyone could help him design a timer-activated machine like the parking meter that we later know as today. 
And uh, so what happened was they had a contest and um, all these people entered with their ideas on how it would work. They ended up not using one idea from that contest. Instead, that professor enlisted the help of a former student and he, his last name was Hale. His first name escapes me, so if you know that first name, just leave a comment below on that. But anyways, he came up with the mach machine. They then enlisted a plumber for the outer casings of it. And so they together came up with this parking meter. And so on July 16th, 1935, Carl placed the first parking meter in Oklahoma City uh, in the downtown area, this would have been about on First and Robinson on the southeast corner. And um, so what you did was you placed a nickel in that machine. And that nickel would buy you one hour of parking time. And so at first, this idea of a parking meter was not well accepted. Uh, there were a lot of people saying, well, this is public parking. We shouldn't have to pay they felt like they were being taxed on their automobiles and uh, it didn't go over well. But the, the thing about it was Carl being the brilliant attorney that he was came back and said, no, this is for parking enforcement. These fees are to cover the police officers that have to enforce it. So it actually did go to court, but his argument on that made it to where it was okay and the parking meters continued. So Carl actually filed a patent on that parking meter. So he is, it's debated by some, but he's credited with inventing the parking meter. And uh, he actually had a uh, company that, that manufactured these parking meters. And of course, the first part of it was McGee, and the other part was that student who later became a professor with the last name Hill. So it was the McGee Hill park o -meter company and then later on it was of course shortened and the names were dropped off and it was just park o -meter company now that that parking meter company is still going of course they've changed the name once again but this idea of solving the downtown traffic with a parking meter absolutely worked the parking problem that was in oklahoma city uh, was no longer a problem. The businesses started saying how it had um, increased the, the, uh, the availability of parking spots in front of businesses, so business was booming once again. And uh, from there, it took off. They started putting more meters in. And, and that, that one nickel that they charged for that one hour of time actually generated money for the city. And so uh, not only was that good, if they didn't pay this nickel, then they, of course, got a fine. So either way, the city was sitting pretty good. This idea caught on to other cities, and other cities started using it. And, and now there's probably more than 5 million of these things all over the United States and the world. Uh, you'll see these all over the place. And of course, the parking meter has changed. It no longer... Uh, most parking meters no longer take coins or anything like that. You'll see ones that actually take cards or they're solar powered and stuff. But his idea was just a time generated mechanical piece of equipment that you turn the dial. Once you push, put the coin in there, you turn the dial and it would let you know uh, how much time you had and when it was up. Uh, there's been a lot of variations over the years of those parking machines, but they, for the longest time they pretty much stayed the same here until recent years, you know, and then of course, like I said, they've got these solar powered ones and stuff like that. So anyways, he is buried here with his uh, family. You can see some other McGee's here and uh, uh, those are his sons right there. This is his wife here. It actually says uh, Gracie, wife of Carl McGee. But he was quite a guy. Uh, a lot of people say that he did enough in his lifetime that most people do in several lifetimes. He, he was a teacher. Uh, like I said, he had several master's degrees. He was an attorney. He was a journalist. He was a writer. Uh, you know, and then, of course, an inventor. And uh, there might be a lot of people that don't like the parking meter, but it is a necessity that we have to have in order to have downtown parking that's available 
for everyone. Otherwise, you just have people hogging it all day. So, anyways, I've got this nickel here, and I thought it would be appropriate to uh, just leave a token of remembrance here for him. And it was that nickel that sort of changed things for Oklahoma, specifically Oklahoma City, but then all of Oklahoma and all of the United States. So if you're coming in here, it's immediately to the left when you come in the entrance here. There's two entrances here in the cemetery and either one of those will lead you to this particular spot here. Thanks everyone for joining me on this little story of Carl and his invention of the parking meter. If you enjoy these types of things, I do have a YouTube channel where I show historical figures, uh, famous people in cemeteries, roadside attractions, or just about anything else that would catch my interest that I might want to share with you. I do have an Instagram, and you can follow me there for additional pictures that you might not see in the video. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.